Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today I'll be starting with the series Domain 1 Part 4. In this, we will be covering about the different topics, which includes the first different key roles, risk management organization structure, different organizational culture relating to the risk, organization culture and behavior and impact on the risk management. We will understand about culture in detail. Next on our plate will be the risk awareness, how to measure the risk awareness. After that the risk element with their descriptions and at last will be the risk driven business approach. After this it will be an end of part 4 domain 1. So friends without wasting time let's start with the today's topic. Friends. There are several crucial tasks that may be clearly defined within the business function of risk management in order to avoid misconception and poor communication. The following are the major roles shown in the video. The first will be the risk manager. Who are the risk managers? Friends, the risk managers are accountable for making sure that the risk management procedures are followed to support the aims and objectives of the company. A risk manager is the individual responsible for managing an organization's risk and minimizing the adverse impact of losses on the achievement of the organization's objectives. Risk managers advises organization on any potential risk to the profitability, safety, security or existence of the company. They identify and assess threat to an organization, put plan in place for if things go wrong and decide how to avoid, reduce or transfer the risk. Next will be the risk analyst. Friends, the risk analyst, they are charged for identifying, analyzing and evaluating potential danger to the company. Risk analysts are the professionals who support the technical side of an organization's holistic risk management approach. Once the risk data has been compiled and evaluated, analysts share their findings with the managers who use those insights to decide among possible solutions. Risk managers develop plans to minimize and mitigate negative financial outcomes through a combination of project management and proposal development. Next will be the risk owner. The friends, the person who bears responsibility for your realized risk scenarios, loss and in whose hand the company has placed the power to make choices based on the risk. The individual who is ultimately accountable for ensuring the risk is managed appropriately. There may be multiple personals who have direct responsibility for or oversight of activities to manage each identified risk and who collaborate with the accountable risk owner in his oblique her risk management effort. In a nutshell, we can say that the risk owner is a person or entity with the accountability and authority to manage a risk including determining controls. Next will be the risk owner, sorry control owner. Who are control owners? The, they are the person in charge of making sure that the controls are created, put into place and working as intended to keep the risk at a level that is acceptable. Friends, the risk owner can also be the same as a control owner. This covers personal, control, design, implementation and monitoring. A control owner is accountable for implementing and maintaining the effectiveness of specific control as recorded in a risk register, in a position, description or in organization policies and procedures. Control owners may also be responsible for designing or modifying controls to improve their effectiveness. 
One person might be a risk owner and a control owner for more than one control, as discussed earlier, related to that risk. But often, the roles might be filled by the separate individuals. Okay, now moving further ahead, let's discuss about the control steward. Who are the control stewards? They are the individuals who are responsible for a routine management and maintenance of control on behalf of the control owner and institute changes at the direction of the control owner. Right? In this, we can say they are, they, are, they are the people who oversee the everyday management and upkeep of control on behalf of the control owner and implement modification at the control owner's request. At last, we have the subject matter expert. Who are the subject matter expert? They are the individuals who have an intimate knowledge and can provide valuable insight into the specific areas within an organization as they relate to the identified and perceived threat and risk to the enterprise. Making it more clear that they are based on their experience and understanding and expertise in their respective field, these people have the deep understanding and can offer insightful information about the certain areas such as financial, IT or call center. Within an organization as they relate to threat or perceived risk to the enterprise. So friends, after discussing all this, let's go ahead and move further ahead and let's see the some question answer series. Well, first question number one, which of the following is not a key role within the business function of the risk management? Risk manager, risk analyst, control steward, subject matter expert. Question number two, who owns the loss associated with the realized risk scenario? Risk manager. Risk Analyst, Risk Owner, Control Owner. Next question, what is the responsibility of the control owner? To make the risk based decision, to ensure the controls are designed, implemented and operating as planned, to provide insight into the specific areas of the organization and last, to institute changes at the direction of the control owner. Question 4. Who is responsible for the routine management and maintenance of control? Risk manager, risk analyst, control owner, control steward. Let's see some more questions. Who is responsible for analysis, evaluation and assessment of identified threat faced by the enterprise? Risk manager, risk analyst, control owner, subject matter expert. Question number six, who is responsible for making risk based decisions? Risk analyst, risk manager, control owner, subject matter expert. Question seven, who is responsible for ensuring controls are designed, implemented and operating as planned to keep risk at an acceptable level? Risk manager, risk analyst, risk owner, control owner and question 8 who has an intimate knowledge and can provide valuable insight into the specific areas within an organization as they relate to identified or perceived threat and risk to the enterprise risk manager risk analyst risk owner and subject matter expert friends do comment with the correct answer and with explanation if we have not able to understand these all questions Please rewind the video and understand it once again and then appear for this question answer series. And after that, please subscribe and hit like button. Moving further ahead, let's discuss about the organization management, risk management organization culture. Friends, the organizational structure and the culture are the crucial success element for the risk management program. Right? because they have the direct impact on the staff decision on the risk prevention and risk detection and risk response initiative and effective reporting and the notification structure together with the rules and the processes are in place in a mature company to successfully identify, communicate and escalate an issue. For instance, a company without a developed incident response capacity 
would frequently respond to the situation in an erratic, ad hoc, oblique reactionary way and can anticipate the variable outcomes. The enterprise should have a mandate for the risk management function that enables the risk practitioner to review and offer input on all business processes, take part in incident management activities and be in charge of reviewing incidents to identify lesson learned and to enhance incident response, planning, detection and recovery. However, in utilizing the risk scenario requires the teamwork and information sharing since the lesson learned in one department, system or application may be used to safeguard other department, system or application against the same issue. In this, we can say that the risk organize, uh, organization structure, the governing body that is senior management, they have the risk management, business unit, information technology and assurance, assurance led by the lead auditor or analyst. Similarly, in Infotech, there are the two parts that is operation and a steward. In a steward, we have system and control and in operations, we have application, network, system and security operations. Right? In the business unit, we have the finance and the HR. In the finance, we have the general ledger and a control owner. In the HR, we have a HR man owner and the control owner. Similarly, in the risk management, we have the manager and the analyst. Let's moving further ahead. Let's discuss about the organizational culture relating to the risk, right? Usually what happens, usually the strategy and the perspective of the organization take on the risk related issues personifies, right? The behavior and the attitude of organization toward the risk. The ability of the risk practitioner to effectively contribute to the protection of the enterprise and aid in the investigation of an incident may be severely impaired if the organization culture is to hide the problem rather than communicate or address them or to only use a negative situation to point the finger in such a way in such a case the representative organization structure are shown right the first that the vulnerable don't care culture right in this what happens like every corporate governance involves robust risk management strategy in the way that they seek to protect its position right while achieving its objectives lies the reflection of the asset governance and corporate purpose with the risk serving as a factor right that may impair such attainment the ability to understand the risk queries requires an understanding of enterprise ethics and the values in this the enterprise values are reflected in these and the various type of organizational culture related to the risk right the now in this the first we have vulnerable right in vulnerable don't care culture that that they accept the incident do happen right how it will happen like apathy right what is apathy let's understand the apathy what happens human error continue to be the leading cause of of a cyber security right breach nearly 60% I repeat, 60% of the organizations experience data loss due to an employee mistake on email in the last year. While one in the four employees fail for the phishing attack. Friends, employee apathy, while it may not seem like a major cybersecurity issue, can leave an organization vulnerable to both malicious attack and accidental data loss. Equipping employee with the tools and the knowledge they need to prevent this risk has never been more important to keep organization safe. Right? In this what happens, we, as we have understood the apathy, moving further ahead, never near miss not considered, negligence, hiding of incident, little or no training, poor or no communication. Next, reactive, that is a blame culture. It happens that prevent a similar incident. In this what happens, let's understand, then we'll go ahead for the following points what has been mentioned. Right? A blame culture refer to an environment where people or the group or the team of people are frequently singled out and blamed, criticized and fault is apportioned for the mistakes and errors. 
this tend to result in a situation where people are reluctant to accept responsibility for their actions and mistakes. Because they are afraid of criticism and reprimand from their managers and leaders, it also results in the people who are unwilling to take risk or speak out. So friends, in a blame culture, there is a tendency to assign responsibility to a specific goal. This is especially evident when there is a legal proceedings because an individual person or organization must be guilty. Therefore, it is a certain action of an individual or a group of people who are held responsible and at the same time assume that the person or a persons are responsible for their action. So after having this background, we can nearly uh, come to a conclusion like that the uh, mentioned that it is mentioned in the video. Like in the reactive culture, it is uh, written the resistance to the caring, some near misreporting, some window dressing, ad hoc inconsistent training and communication on need to know basis. Moving further ahead, let's go ahead about the compliance culture. In this what happens, it prevents the incident before they occur. To keep an overview, let's discuss first what happens in the compliance culture. Compliance is an act right, of ensuring that no one at your institution or working on behalf or of your institu institution knowingly or accidentally violates a law, regulation, rule or an institution's own internal policies. Right? Compliance is an area that involves fulfilling specific requirements on a regular basis that makes the culture of compliance focus largely on the task competition right as mentioned it assigned the res it, it responsibility has been assigned in this right it reporting limited to the compliance area as required that process def definition limited and instrumentation and investment and minimal train required training compartmentalized communication moving further ahead let's the understand about the ownership culture right it is a continuous improvement of the system in the day to day an ownership culture is one in which the employee take initiative right they solve the problem and demonstrate the leadership on the governance side ownership means that the employee owners actively participate in meeting and are well informed about the issues they vote on and the company in general right so in this ownership culture, it clears the account lines of accountability and responsibility defined. It process the defined, processes defined to enhance the long-term sustainability and operationalization. Appropriate instrumentation and investments are made. Training defined and required. Next, resilient. That is a way to do life. Right? Way to do the business. In this, what happens? In this what happens that the line of accountability and responsibility communicated and are understood. Active monitoring and reporting happens, advanced instrumentation and investment made and training is encouraged with the active communication. Right? Moving further ahead, let's decide about the reactive approach. In the vulnerable, if we have want a reactive approach, what happens is a no process defined, legal non-compliance accept the process decay, superficial incident investigation, no risk assessment, no monitoring audit, permit non-compliance and potential for legal e activity. Similarly, in the reactive that is a blame culture, it is administrative driven like reactive risk assessment, minimum legal compliance, incident investigation but minimum analysis. Focus on what happened or no system focus or focus on the human fault and similarly ad hoc monitoring oblique audit. Now moving further ahead, like compliance driven, it is HIPAA or SOX driven. What is HIPAA and SOX driven? Okay, let's understand. HIPAA that is a Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, right? and SOX that is Sabrinus Oxley Act of 2002. They both 
target very much different issues and have much different requirement right in this what happens the hipa regulation were put into place to protect the patient privacy generally is applicable for the healthcare industry right which limit their applicability to the organizations directly or indirectly involved with the healthcare the sox regulation were enacted to protect investors from the fraudulent financial practices and they apply to all the public companies friends uh, let's understand like every department within the organization shares in the responsibility for ensuring that they are complying with the applicable regulation however database team are often put into a unique position because they end up managing the regulated data leaving them to deal with many of the logistical issues that go with achieving compliance right if they are clearing to be if they are going to be successful they need to clearly understand what rules governs which data okay so let's moving further ahead it also understand the risk assessment through the existing system legal compliance planned hygiene and management initiative periodic testing and evaluations planned monitoring and audits next the proactive that is ownership culture is a business driven in this we have the formal risk assessment beyond legal compliance incident lesson learned shared with all the levels well designed plans process and procedures focus on adhering to the plans and procedures and integrated audit similarly risk driven integrated management system risk assessment integrated at all levels self regulating reduce stroke eliminate problems before they occur all threat considered in the decision making enhancement through audit of the stroke evaluation friends let's move start with the question answer series what we have understood till yet okay now first question what is the risk management the risk management the options are process of reducing the risk in an enterprise option 2 a core part of corporate governance option next option the factor that may lead to failure and next an understanding of the goals and objective of the enterprise similarly next question what are the components that help to determine the organization culture of the enterprise first risk management and corporate governance next goal objectives values and ethics asset and mission of the enterprise reducing risk and attaining goals next question what does the risk management seek to do create a culture of risk taking protect asset and attain goals next option reduce risk in an enterprise and next option determining the values and ethics of the enterprise question number 4 what type of culture is characterized by apathy and negligence vulnerable reactive compliant don't care culture right moving further ahead let's brush up what we have learned what is an example of a consequence of don't care culture safety resilience proactivity negligence similarly what is the common characteristics of a blame culture ad hoc and consistent training open and consistent communication resistance to caring high level of near miss reporting moving further ahead question next question what kind of communication is common in a blame culture open and consistent communication ad hoc and inconsistent training need to know basis high level of near miss reporting similarly what is not a common characteristics of a blame culture resistance to caring open and consistent communication high level of near miss reporting ad hoc and consistent training next let's see next some few more questions what is the primary purpose of a compliance culture to ensure that all employees are following 
the same rules to ensure that the communication is compartmentalized next to ensure that all employees receive the same training next option to ensure that all employees are reporting to the compliance area question next what is an example of a responsibility that may be assigned as a part of compliance culture monitoring employee performance regularly reviewing company policies establishing an as required process definition investing in the new instrument friends please do comment with the correct answer definitely we have understood what we what what has been what has been shown in the earlier videos if you can't able to make out please go back listen to the topic once again and appear this question series moving further ahead let's discuss about the organization culture and behavior and impact on the risk management and this what happens like it is one of the first challenge of the risk professionals right in determining the risk appetite of the senior management few examples like enterprise decisions we have discussed like the example of the risk that the management should assess and establish acceptance criteria for to include determining whether a company should invest take a new business uh, starting a new business field development of a new product open a new office hiring a new employees next invest in the new hardware or software update existing applications and implementation of the new control friends what happens in this the risk professional should be aware right that the risk appetite can change over time or depending upon the type of the risk therefore one should periodically review their risk appetite the magnitude of changes in the risk appetite can be dramatic right depending on the market condition confidence past success or failure the global economy media coverage resource availability new regulation or long term strategies right uh friends the culture and ethics also play a role in determining the deviation from the defined risk appetite right for uh, like deviation from the defined risk appetite can also occur and setting an appropriate risk tolerance should be based on a predefined set of criteria these standards should should be established before the risk management is undertaken right thus ensuring that the risk responses are considered in the appropriate context let's understand with an example right before the start of the project a business unit can set a criteria right that allow a maximum 20% increase in the project duration but only a 10% increase in the cost right another example is a financial institution that is known to have a greatly low propensity for credit card fraud as has implemented proactive fraud prevention and countermeasures right at certain times of the year fraud prevention opportunities may be mitigated right due to increased consumer purchases these ruling ensures right that the ensure that the uh, revenue generated during the season will not be affected right by losses due to fraud consume oblique uh, consumer dissatisfaction or having to comply with the normal anti fraud regulations right and the short season right 30 days it can be done because it is expected to exceed understood so in this what happens in the risk appetite can change or vary based on the risk type and should be reviewed periodically right extent of the risk appetite changes depend upon the market condition as we have discussed right confidence past success failure global economies reports in the media and availability of resource new regulation or a long term strategy okay so when we have understood this thing let's move ahead and just brush up what we have understood right okay uh, review question series 12 first question what should a risk practitioner be aware when assessing the risk appetite market condition availability of resource past successes or failures or global economies question next question what is one example of criteria of a business unit may establish prior 
to kicking of a project. 10% increase in the cost a 20% increase in the duration a low appetite or a credit card fraud an anti-fraud safeguard and countermeasures next what is an example of a decision made by a financial institution to relax anti-fraud capabilities anticipation that revenue generated will exceed losses from the fraudulent activity increase consumer purchases Respond to the normal anti-fraud control, short duration of the seasonal period and next question, what is an example of variation from the defined risk appetite? Establishing a criteria prior to kicking off a project, setting a low appetite for credit card fraud, responding to the risk in a proper context, relaxing anti-fraud capabilities during seasonal period. Friends, do comment with the correct answer with the explanation, right? Now, just moving further ahead, let's discuss about the culture, right? What is a culture? A culture drives the behavior of the personal and a people will often act according to the environment, right? So, friends, the culture determines the staff behavior and the people, right? According, uh, often behave according to the environment, right? A risk culture is defined as a set of shared values and belief that promote the risk taking, diligence and attitude of integrity and how risk and losses are openly reported and discussed, right? All employees of the company should be aware of the risk culture as knowledge of the risk culture provide useful context for their own decision and actions, right? What happens, uh, like because uh, people often uh, act on their belief, right? Creating an environment that respect people belief system is often an effective way to change the behavior, right? For example, a culture of honesty and openness can help employee feel the less frustrated and more involved in the risk management program, right? Reducing the risk of theft or inappropriate behavior or attack, right? So it happens the risk culture is defined uh, as a set of shared values and belief that govern the attitude toward the risk taking, care and integrity and determine how openly risk and losses are reported and discussed right so in this the risk professionals need to recognize that department can have their own subcultures right sticking to the subcultures can cause people to take more risk than management actually want to take right it can also come in the form of people refusing to take risk when management want them to right Subcultures can evolve outside industry norms, but they can also emerge organically, organically in response to proven behavior, right? For example, a company uh, where senior management, right, encourages the employees to take risk, but blame them when things go wrong. Okay, so it may not be a creative and innovative as it would otherwise be. Understood? So an organization normally has a risk culture, which is essentially how an organization as an entity feels about and deal with it risk. This culture is developed from several sources. First, it can come from the organization leadership based upon their businesses and man management philosophies, attitudes, education and experiences. Right? In this, the risk uh, practitioners should be aware that the department may have their own subcultures that differ from the organization culture. Okay. And what happens? It can also come with the organization governance. Right. Uh, remember, the governance is essentially the rules and regulation imposed. Right. Uh, rules and uh, they are imposed either by the external entities in the form of laws or example or internally by the organization right in case the culture of an organization 
really defines how the organization feels about the risk and how it treat the risk over the time culture is defined by three different theories right each establishes uh, uh, each uh, each establishes a, wrong, a working framework right with the key aspect that offer clues to understanding the cultural phenomena right let's understand like uh, according to one anthropologist a culture is an exercise to represent classify and contextually explain meanings created by the individuals through social interaction that is it recognizes socially established structure of meaning such as people issuing signal or perceiving and responding to the insult so that the culture is not a psychological phenomena or a characteristics of thought personality or a cognitive instinctive structure of the individual right i hope you people have understood the culture okay let's moving further ahead and let's make it more clear with the question answer series well gentlemen the first question what is the definition of the risk culture the first the set of shared values and the belief that govern the attitude toward the risk taking care and integrity next option a set of shared value and belief that governs the attitude toward the risk avoidance next option the set of shared values and the belief that govern the attitude toward the risk assessment and next a set of shared values and the belief that govern the attitude toward the risk management next question what is an effective way of changing the behavior options are first create an environment that encourages the risk taking next create an environment that consider people belief system next create an environment that encourages the innovation and next create an environment that encourages the risk avoidance next option what may happen when senior executives encourages employees to take risk but blame them when something goes wrong first employee become more risk averse employee become more engaged in the risk management program next option creativity and innovations may increase and at last theft and inappropriate actions or attack may increase question 4 how can a culture of honesty and openness reduces the risk of theft and inappropriate actions the options are by encouraging the employees to take more risk by providing an environment that considers people belief system by increasing employee engagement in the risk management program and by setting the industry norms friends please do comment with the correct answer please subscribe and the hit like button friends the question answer series will help you out to understand each topics in a different way right just register the topic in your mind understand it and go ahead with the question answer series let's moving further ahead let's discuss about the risk awareness what is the risk awareness right awareness is a powerful tool right for creating culture shaping ethics and influencing the behavior of the organizational member right employee and operations teams are often the first to notice the problem or an anonymous activity right what happens in an awareness program enable the team to develop her approach to the risk management right enabling each member to identify and report the risk and take actions to protect the system and network from attack right this enables rapid response and the rapid risk mitigation should an attack occur right so as discussed that the risk awareness is acknowledges right it acknowledges the risk that is an integral part of the business risk is well understood and known all risk is identifiable and tied back to the business processes the enterprise recognizes and uses the means to meet, manage the risk develop a team approach to identify and report on the risk 
and enable the faster response and better containment after an incident. However, a risk awareness program should not disclose vulnerabilities or ongoing investigation except where the problem has already been addressed. Right? So what happens in a risk awareness program? Risk awareness recognizes that the risk is an integral part of the business. Right? This does not mean that the all risk should be avoided or eliminated, but it does mean that the risks are well understood and recognized. Right? Rec uh, recognize the IT uh, risk issues and the company recognizes and uses the risk management measures. Right? So in this what happens, it is to be tailored to the need of individuals group within the enterprise. It can help to mitigate some type of operational risk right uh, uh, most cost effective improvement in the risk and security reinforce and need for diligence and the caution when addressing the risk it includes the topics such as the required procedures policy compliance identify enterprise risk potential impact of the risk addressed vulnerabilities past attack and compromises Similarly, from the management side, we can say that the supervisory role in the protecting system and application from attack, overseeing staff action, directing compliance with enterprise policies and the practices. Going further ahead, let's discuss about the measuring the risk awareness program. The risk awareness program develops a better understanding of the risk. right? risk factor and the different type of the risk facing companies awareness program should be tailored right to the need of each group within your organization right and can provide the content that is appropriate for that group right A awareness program should not disclose vulnerabilities or ongoing investigation unless right the issue has already been resolved, right? Examples and description of the type of attack and breaches experienced by other organization can help emphasize the need for caution and caution in a managing risk. So friends, in this what happens? Let's understand it. Friends, a risk awareness is a necessary part of the risk management, right? It can it cannot be reviewed as a simply uh, just another two hour training session to check a box for management or compliance. Right. So in the risk awareness is essential because it helps from and maintaining the organization risk culture. It also educate the personnel at all level of organization. Right. Including employees. Moving further ahead, let's discuss about the use. Uh, the third point is the use skill assessment or testing approach to determine the further training needs. Right. Like most training, risk awareness training should meet the several criteria. Right. First, it should be geared toward a specific group of audience. This might include the basic employee training that everyone receives more advanced training for managers or senior leaders and in-depth training for those personal with the assigned risk management responsibilities such as risk owner, risk analyst and so on. Second, training should not be a one-time event, right? Periodic recurring training is a good idea, right? Simply because it can be used to reinforce and refresh the state knowledge and bring trainees up to date on the latest tool, technique and the risk consideration. Finally. Risk awareness training should be well organized and conducted by the knowledgeable instructor both from inside and outside the organization. Right? However, internal trainers right, can give the benefit of organization's specific view on the risk culture, appetite and tolerance while external trainers bring the benefit of objective knowledge and the risk management method from the industry. The subject of the training depend upon the audience, of course, right? But the basic may include the familiarization training with the rules and regulations regarding the risk within the organization, as well as 
द बेसिक स्टेप ऑफ द रिस्क मैनेजमेंट राइट द बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ डेफिनेशन मे ऑल्सो बी प्रोवाइडेड इन फेमिलराइजिंग ट्रेनिंग अंडरस्टूड सो स्पेसिफिक ट्रेनिंग ऑन द रिस्क मैनेजमेंट टेक्निक कैन एंड टूल मे बी रिजर्व फॉर दोज एम्प्लॉयज हु हैव डायरेक्ट रिस्क मैनेजमेंट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज दे ऑल्सो मे नीड टू बी ट्रेनिंग फॉर अ सीनियर लीडरशिप एंड ऑन हाउ टू डेवलप द रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रैटेजी एंड द प्लान फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एटसेट्रा देर आर सेवरल वेज राइट देर आर सेवरल वेज ऑन दैट एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कैन डिलीवर द रिस्क अवेयरनेस ट्रेनिंग राइट different combination of all of them should probably be used as an uh, used to deliver an effective training program classroom training is one of course one standard method right other method might include the individual based training that comes from a reading computer based training and so on employee might also be required to read a risk management handbook that defines the different rules and regulations covering risk within the organizations a specialized training on the risk management might have to be provided by an external training provider for those individuals with defined risk management responsibilities right so friends deriving an additional training requirement from the tracking help desk activity and operational error security event and audits so however we can say that developing an organization risk awareness program right so how do you go ahead about the risk awareness program right so establishing a risk awareness program in an organization can be challenge right one may organization fail to simply direct someone to develop a training program when organization has not even established its risk management strategy or plan right so developing the organization take on the risk is an essential first step before implementing risk awareness training right so the organization has to develop formally its instance on the risk appetite and tolerance as well as its risk management strategy it should decide what risk management methodology it will use as well as what standards and framework only then can a training program be developed based on the solid good solid risk management framework within the organization right beyond initial or recurring risk awareness training ongoing communication within the organization is must for effectively managing the risk awareness right so what happens like employee in general but also specifically right those with the key risk management duties should be given information on an ongoing basis regarding organizational risk and how to manage and deal with them obviously some information would be restricted and the general organizational population but specific instance of threat and vulnerabilities risk factor and so on should be provided to the risk managers in the key areas so they can keep updated on the most current risk posture of the organization having overview all these things let's st further start with the question answer series okay what is the primary purpose of the risk awareness program to disclose the vulnerabilities and ongoing investigations to identify and report on the risk to develop a team approach to the risk management to create an understanding of the risk and the risk factors next what is the most effective way to measure the success of an awareness program option 1 computer or the paper based quizzes tracking help the desk activity use of standardized testing approach operational error and security events next what should the senior management be reminded of an awareness program the next to create an tone and the culture of the enterprise next option the next for the compliance and the due diligence need need to protect system and application from attack 
responsibility for determining the risk and acceptance level. Question 4. What is the purpose of the risk awareness in an enterprise? To identify and report on the risk, to eliminate all risk, to develop a team approach to the risk management and to disclose the vulnerabilities. Moving further ahead, let's discuss about the risk culture elements. So risk culture element. Before going ahead further ahead, let's discuss about the what is risk culture, right? The risk culture is a system of values and behavior that shape the risk decision of the business, right? As we have discussed earlier. So it defines the norms and tradition of the behavior of the employees or employer in an organization that determines how they identify, understand and discuss and manage the risk that a business faces and the risk it takes. Just let's understand with an example, right? In the case of a bank, right? A risk culture is the bank norms, attitude and behavior related to the risk awareness, right? In this what happened, the risk taking and the risk management and the control that shape the decision on the risk, okay? So it influences the decision of the employers and the employees during their day-to-day -day activities, even when they are not consciously analyzing and weighing the risk. It also has a bearing on the risk they assume, right? So the risk culture of an enterprise refer to the level of willingness that the senior management consciously or unconsciously develop and communicates with regard to embracing, cautiously accepting or avoiding the risk. Understood? So this is a critical aspect of the company success. Okay? So to instill a strong risk culture in an organization, it is crucial for the senior management to set an example and take the lead. This means that they are not only have to communicate these principles verbally, but also demonstrate them through their behavior and decision making process. So a reliable sign of a company risk culture, okay, is how it determines the most effective course of action in response to the different risk. Risk culture involve assessing both the negative and the positive impact of the risk as well as regulatory considerations okay so in this let's uh, moving further ahead and understand this thing okay now the first behavior toward taking the risk right so in this what happens that the how much uh, risk okay does the enterprise believe that it can absorb and what specific risk is it willing to take okay so in this what happens they are informed conservative that is uh, risk averse and aggressive that is risk taking next behavior toward policy compliance let's understand it in this what happens it is to what extent do people within the enterprise embrace or comply with the policy okay like compliance or non compliant similarly behavior toward taking the risk In this what happens like how does the enterprise deal with the losses missed opportunities and other negative outcome does it learn from them or try to adjust or does it assign blame without treating the root cause okay so misalignment between the risk appetite stated in the policy and reflected in the behavior management promulgates policies right that mandates an approach to the risk that is largely or completely different from demonstrable behavior and within the enterprise okay so in this what happens existence of a blame culture understood discussion focus on the symptoms and accountability for problem root cause are rarely identified okay so in this business unit tend to blame in from IT when projects are not delivered on time okay and do not or uh, less uh, do not meet expectation in doing so they fail to realize that how the business unit involvement upfront affect the project success a blame culture refer to an environment where people or a group team of people are frequently singled out and blamed 
criticized and fault is apportioned for the mistake and errors. This tends to result in a situation where people are reluctant to accept responsibility for their actions and mistakes because they are afraid of criticism and reprimand from their managers and the leaders. In the extreme cases, the business unit may assign blame for their failure to meet the expectation that the unit never clearly communicated. However, friends, the blame game only detracts from the effective communication across the unit, further fueling delays. So since we have understood, okay, let's move further ahead. Let's discuss about the description of risk culture. As we have understood, like the behavior toward the policy compliance. Sorry, first behavior toward taking the risk, right? So how much the risk does the enterprise believe that it can absorb and what specific risk is willing to take? Similarly, behavior toward policy compliance. To what extent do people within the enterprise embrace or comply with the policy? Third, behavior toward negative outcome. How does the enterprise deal with the losses? missed opportunities and other negative outcomes. Does it learn from them or try to adjust or does it assign the blame without treating the root cause? As we have understood, misalignment between the risk appetite stated in the policy and reflected in the behavior. It means that the management promulgate the policies that mandate an approach to the risk that is largely or completely different from demonstrable behavior by and within the enterprise. And at last, existing of a blame culture. In this, the discussion focus on the symptoms and accountability for problems and root cause are really identified. So friends, let's moving further ahead with the review question answer series. Let's start with the question answer series. Okay, now the first question, which of the risk is a behavior toward risk taking? Embracing policies, dealing with the losses, learning from the negative outcomes, and assigning blame. Question number two, what does the blame culture typically involve? Identifying the root causes, focusing on symptoms and accountability, assigning blame to the IT, quickly control blame. Question three. How does the executive leadership respond to a blame culture? First, by promulgating policies, foster collaborations. Next option, identify and quickly control the blames. And option D is assigning blame to the different units. Question four, what is the main principle of a risk culture? Learning from losses and missed opportunities, compliance with the policy, taking a specific risk and assigning blame. Friends, please do comment with the correct answer. Please subscribe and hit the like button. Now moving further ahead, let's discuss about the risk driven business approach. Today's last topic. Okay, let's first start. The first is identify, right? So in this, what happens? In identify, in identify, what is sensitive, right? That is regulated data, understood. Where and how much of it is received, who has the access to it, where it is processed and stored, and how do we share it with it, right? After that, we have to analyze and assess, okay? What to assess? Understand it. How much risk exists for each point, right? Where sensitive data is received, okay? Processed, stored, or provided or shared with the third parties. After this, there are two options. Risk fall within the defined limits. Does risk fall within the defined limits? What response are available, okay? what response uh, that will yield the most valuable right so if there is a mitigation technique right to reduce the risk risk what is mitigation understand each and every 
parts you will able to decipher it and make it more clear in your mind right so the mitigation risk right mitigation that is reduce risk mitigation is a risk mitigation is a practice right of reducing the impact of potential risk by developing a plan to manage eliminate or limit the setback as much as possible after management creates and carries out the plan they'll monitor progress and assess whether or not they need to modify any actions if necessary in a nutshell risk mitigation describes the tactics right and technique that bring the risk level down to a tolerable level for the business okay what are technical controls that is apply to the appropriate technical control to reduce the risk to an acceptable level okay so we'll discuss in the next slide okay so so uh, technical control as it includes the network segmentation understood what is network segmentation a network segmentation is a network okay security technique that divide the network into a smaller distinct sub network that enable the network team to compartmentalize the sub network and deliver the unique security control and services to each sub network okay so example of a network segmentation can cause create a secure guest network dedicate user access create a network for work or from home access with additional security such as mandatory virtual private network increase the public cloud security and isolate iot devices into their own network okay next required protocols next white list white list applications what are white list applications application white listing also known as application allow listing okay is a common method used by the it organizations to secure on premise and cloud based network and infrastructure against the malicious cyber attack and unwanted network penetration okay so to implement the application whitelisting the it organization may use technologies that are built into a host operating system or leverage the capabilities to a more sophisticated security tool in either case the organization creates a list of application that are given special access to the network understood let's moving further ahead in the technical control it is the firewall we all know what is firewall is right so let's just have an overview of it right a firewall monitors right incomings and outgoing network traffic and block any unwanted traffic understood so it is essential a uh, essentially a border right between one network and another understood most often between a private network and the internet so once in place a firewall inspect all traffic going into or out of a network if a given packet of information breaks the firewall preset rules it can then block the packet from passing understood so we can say that the firewall is a detective and preventive technical control it monitor both monitor for threat and prevent them from accessing the network right so let's discuss moving further ahead that is encryption okay what is encryption encryption is a protective technical control okay that scrambles the information so that the unauthorized user cannot access it through encryption legible plain text is converted into cipher text that appears to be gibberish of seemingly random character we have seen right but encryption is not random instead it uses the algorithm and pattern to render the data illegible if a user has a right key they can then unscramble the data and access it okay so in this what happens encryption is a protective control right a goal is to prevent the unauthorized user from accessing the data okay next authentication system 
वॉट इज ऑथेंटिकेशन सिस्टम फ्रेंड्स ऑथेंटिकेशन टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोवाइड द एक्सेस कंट्रोल फॉर द सिस्टम बाई चेकिंग टू सी इफ अ यूजर क्रेडेंशियल मैचेज द क्रेडेंशियल इन अ डेटा बेस ऑफ ऑथराइज यूजर और इन अ डेटा ऑथेंटिकेशन सर्वर इन डूइंग दिस ऑथेंटिकेशन अश्योर्स सिक्योर सिस्टम सिक्योर प्रोसेस एंड एंटरप्राइज इंफॉर्मेशन सिक्योरिटी ओके लेस मूविंग फर्दर हेड दैट इज वनरेबिलिटी स्कैनिंग वॉट इज वनरेबिलिटी स्कैनिंग वनरेबिलिटी स्कैनर्स आर द फ्रंट लाइन ऑफ वनरेबिलिटी मैनेजमेंट ओके सो दे आर एसेंशियली फॉर आइडेंटिफाइंग वनरेबिलिटीज दैट कुड बी यूज बाई योर बैड एक्टर्स टू कॉम्प्रोमाइज सिस्टम्स एंड डेटा वनरेबिलिटी स्कैनिंग रेफर टू द स्कैनिंग ऑफ अ सिस्टम नेटवर्क कॉम्पोनेंट्स और एप्लीकेशन विच मे एक्सपोज टू द एक्सटर्नल वर्ल्ड और होस्टेड इंटरनली टू डिटेक्ट द वनरेबिलिटी और सिक्योरिटी वीकनेस इन दम फ्रेंड्स वनरेबिलिटी स्कैनर्स आर द टूल यू नो यूज टू परफॉर्म द वनरेबिलिटी स्कैनिंग वनरेबिलिटी स्कैनर्स है द डेटा बेस ऑफ वनरेबिलिटीज बेस्ड ऑन विच इट परफॉर्म द चेक ऑन द रिमोट होस्ट the vulnerability database contain of all the information right required like service port packet type a potential path to exploit to check the security issues okay next centralized logging or seam tools right uh, what is seam is a security incident and event management okay let's let's understand about centralized logging first okay so uh, in this the centralized logging is a process right of collecting the logs from the network understood infrastructure and application into a single location for storage and analysis this can provide administrators with a consolidated view of all the activity across the network making it easier to identify and troubleshoot the issues what is the benefit of a centralized logging it help in uh, handling the multiple log format okay uh, it also it can help in the efficient the central storage and it further add or do the faster search querying across all the logs okay so let's discuss moving further uh, seam tools what is seam right security incident and event management okay so it is the process it is a process right of monitoring identifying analyzing and recording the security incidents and an event in the real time giving a comprehensive snapshot of an organization's security status this is implemented with some combination of software system and appliance so a security incident and event management system generally includes six attributes okay what are the six attributes however it's a retention that is for the storing the data dashboard for analyzing the data correlation that is for the sorting the data alerting for activating the protocols to alert the user after the data triggers contain uh, cert, uh, data triggers certain response next aggregation that is gathering data from various sources and consolidating it before archival or analysis and last is the compliance that is collecting data in accordance with the organizational or the government policies next dlp solution what is dlp solution is a data loss and prevention right data loss prevention is a security solution understood okay that identifies and help prevent the unsafe or inappropriate sharing transfer or use of sensitive data it can help your organizations monitor and protect the sensitive information across on the premise system cloud based location and end point devices it also help you to achieve the compliance with the regulation such as the health insurance portability and accountability act and with respect to general data protection regulation okay next will be the ids what is ids intrusion detection system okay or intrusion prevention system now ids is a monitoring system okay that detects suspicious activity and generates alert when they are detected okay 
So based upon this alert, a security operation center, right? Analyst or incident responder can investigate the issue and take the appropriate actions to remediate the threat. Okay. After this is antivirus and anti-malware. Everyone is aware what is antivirus, anti-malware. Generally, malware protection is a robust cyber security solution, right? That add an extra layer of security to your computer to protect against the cyber attack. Once downloaded to your device, malware protection periodically scans your computer to identify, quarantine and eliminate any malware to keep your system secure. Next email protection, like file uh, email protection, right? Everyone is aware what is email protection, understood? So as we have discussed about the technical control, the next is the organization measures, right? What is organizational measures? Let's discuss. Okay. So friends, the organization measures includes the first is the data minimization, right? What is data minimization? The principle of data minimization means that the data controller should limit the collection of the personal information to what it is directly relevant. Okay. And necessary to accomplish a specific purpose. They should also retain the data only for a as long as it necessary to fulfill that purpose. They should also retain the data only for as long as it necessary, right? The data minimization principle also requires that this collection is also necessary because you cannot achieve the purpose of processing otherwise. So for example, the purpose of collecting the biometric data as a part of fingerprint check at the entrance of the building is a to prevent unauthorized person from entering. Now next physical access control. What is physical access control? Let's understand. In the modern era, physical access is very often controlled via a physical access control system. Okay, that is software and hardware designed to work in combination with the electronic door, locks and authorization guidelines. This system translate an organization's guidelines about who has access to what. Right? Example, room, equipment, lockers, etc. Into the verification that the lock and unlocks access. Such a system will contain a database of different cross level and list of which people belong to those access level. Understood? So it will actually control the locking mechanism on various doors and the barriers and in accordance with the access level of the person providing credentials. Next, data classification. What is data classification? That is the data classification is the process of organizing data into the categories that make it easy to retrieve, sort and store for future use. A well-planned data classification system makes essential data easy to find and retrieve. Okay, next will be the data handling. What is data handling? Data handling is the process okay, of ensuring that the research data is stored, archived or disposed of in a stay safe and a secure manner during and after the conclusion of a research project. Okay, so this includes the development of policies and procedures to manage the data handled electronically as well as through the non-electronic means. Under this category, the organization measures. Next in the line is the data retention. What is data retention? The objective of the data retention policies are to keep important information for future use or references okay so that to organize the information so it can be searched and accessed at a later date and to dispose of the information that is no longer needed right background checks self explanatory next employee privacy training okay so how to go ahead with the employee privacy training generally most of the electronic data losses occurs as a result of malware tricking So in employee privacy training, generally most of the electronic data losses 
occur as a result of malware tricking the employees right to click on a link or install a program from the internet understood uh, which will then infect the target device may it be a computer phone or tablet understood however spoofing makes an employee believe that they need to send information to a trusted party by pretending the request for information comes from a trusted party in a first place okay so in this one often thinks of a data breach understood as hacker had by a criminal organization or nation states getting into the company's network in order to extract sensitive and private data most of the time employee error not limited to electronic breaches is the cause for a most data loss in other words the result of simple non malicious mistake due to negligence next employee privacy training next employee security training understood okay let's understand whatever the security awareness right training is the process of educating the people okay to understand identify and avoid the cyber threat okay so the ultimate goal is to prevent or mitigate harm to both the organization and its stakeholders and reduce the human cyber risk okay uh, uh we can have some recent figure right so do you know that the average cost of data breach in 2022 okay was just under 4.34 uh, million dollars right is an all time high okay only one in the nine businesses right 11% they provide the cyber security awareness program to the non cyber employees in 2020 okay there are a few datas which we have uh, uh, taken one in the three data breaches involved the phishing and 20% of the organization faced a security breach as a result of a remote worker so you can understand why it is important right moving further ahead let's discuss about the business resiliency what is business resiliency a business resiliency is an organization ability to absorb the stress okay recover critical functionality and thrive in altered circumstances in short it position organization to be pre prepare for anything traditionally business resilience was it focus it meant ensuring that application and data would remain available and secure during a disruptive event such as cyber attack provided the disruption lasted only hours or days and affected facilities or workers in just one reason now the business resiliency need to be about more than just protecting a company's it operation organizations must be able to adapt operations in response to continuous change as well as major event and continue to thrive next information security governance what is information security governance information security governance plays a vital role okay uh, uh in business today it allow you to show potential business partners that you have a structure and processes that guides your information security decisions and incident response as a result you are running a tight ship not leaving anything up to the chance okay so after this we can see that the there are uh, next step will be the transfer risk that is insecure avoid risk that is stop or reassess if you have to reassess then uh, residual risk acceptable accept risk or monitor so friends here we come to the end of our domain 4 do, uh, domain 1 part 4 end of part for domain 1 thanks for watching and please like and share in your learning groups friends after this we will be covering about uh, i'll come with the question answer series please do attempt the all the question answer series and make sure that you have understood the topic thank you thank you for watching